Hi everyone, it's Sunday the 21st of March and it's 7.45 in the evening. Now, in this video I'm going to be talking about mopeds, basically moped scooters. Uh, to be more specific about my own classic, because I own a 1975 PF50, um, plus my plans for the next month regarding scooter and perhaps some advice from my viewers hopefully and your thoughts on this um, so I'm going to start with that before I get to the, my classic which is what these are here for <laughs> I only needed one replacement lamp for and I've got three but I'll explain all that in a minute um, so I've now got the ability to go out and buy a brand new scooter if I want. I could get a second hand one. I could get a you know fully restored usable classic if I want. I haven't decided. Um, but I've got that opportunity and to go in, you know, get my CBT done and everything. And that's what I want to do by the end of this next month, or at least in the next four weeks. Um, which is not going to be a bad thing because, you know, my mum is planning to move. She's going to be moving about nine miles away and it would be nice to have my own independence. I haven't got to rely on someone to drive nine miles from her house to here to pick me up and then take me to there and then bring me back, you know. Just be nice to have my own mode of transport. Unless it's pissing it down with rain, of course. <laughs> but anyway, I've got that opportunity, so... What I just want to know is is what you guys think. Should I go for a brand new one? My mum is actually right in what she said. If I go brand new, I've got a warranty with it. Um, I don't have to MOT it for the first three years. I've just basically got to tax and insure it. That's it. Um, you know, and with a modern one, she said, if anything breaks, parts are easier to get for it. Um, the only thing is, I don't really like modern bikes. I am a classic vehicle man. I like my classics. I'd rather have a classic car to drive daily over a modern one. And I'm pretty much the same when it comes to bikes. I could always buy a working classic in the future, you know. I don't have to get one now. Well, technically I don't have to buy one because I'm restoring one. <laughs> Hence these um, spare light units I've got sitting here. Um, so, what do you guys think? Should I go for a new one? Um, or second hand? Because there is some um, decent dealerships in this area, thankfully. Some well-known dealerships that have been around a number of years, like Tinklers, and there's another one around here, and I cannot remember its name. <laughs> Um, DRDs across the way there. They used to do scooters, but uh, they've changed everything around lately and they don't seem to have any there now. It looks primarily like um, off-roady type bikes. They seem to have changed their direction. Anyway, still no harm going in to look. I could probably get my helmet and gloves from there. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, anyway. On to classics. So, as I said, I've got, down at Mum's at the moment, a 1975 Honda PF50. Can't remember if it's at the Amigo or the Novio, I just know it's the four-stroke model. <clears throat> I've got a manual for it through there. Um, I bought it about a year ago as a restoration project. Um, the guy I bought it from also bought it as a restoration project. An unfinished restoration project, I might add, because um, he's into his old bikes as well. He was going to restore it, but you know, he he seemed quite genuine to me, and everything he told me about the bike has been a hundred percent accurate. So I've got no reason to doubt him at all. But um, he just needed some space, and he was more interested in doing some other bikes rather than that one. So. I bought it for the grand total of 250 quid, 
which I have now found out was one hell of a bargain. Um, I've not seen another PF50 come up for sale anyway, not even on eBay. Parts are... I can get some parts, but others are proving quite difficult to find. Um, but uh, someone has at some point started to restore it. It's been um, resprayed. <laughs> Um, I don't know if it's because it was respraked maybe a number of years ago or if it was just a shit job or a mix of both, but either way it needs doing again. Um, but at the moment I can't because my stepdad's put all of his tools into storage because of the planned move, which is one reason I've actually put the re restoration of the uh, ped on hold. <clears throat> um... Until they move and they, my stepdad builds himself another workshop, I think he's actually just going to buy a um, large shed this time rather than build it. Because uh, he's got the spray gun, he's got the proper spray compressor tank thing to use. So I can do a proper spray job on it. Or I could send the frame off to be powder coated. You know, we've got a shot blasting gun so I can shot blast the parts if I want. And then send it all off to be um, powder coat. I don't know yet. I'll decide that when I've taken that part. But uh, I didn't want to move boxes of moped parts. Which is why I've left it as it is. I haven't taken it apart yet. The only parts I've got kicking around are the parts in the bucket that, it, that came with it. That were already taken off. You know, like the headlamp, the tank. Um, it's missing the grill. That covers the horn, it goes on the front of the forks. It's missing a horn. It needs a throttle cable because the one on it isn't the correct one or it's been shorned, I'm not sure which. It needs a decompression cable. I've got the lever, I did buy a new lever for it because that was missing. Uh, the tank has got a hole in it which needs fixing. The classic, someone's put a too long a bolt in there and pierced the bottom of the tank. <laughs> So that's got to be fixed and I need the seat covered. The original foam and covering is completely knackered. I may have to make something up myself simply because I cannot find one. But I don't think it's going to be too difficult to cut some foam to shape and then cover it with some leather or something, whatever it is they use to cover seats with. Um, <clears throat> so. At the moment, it's just got a solid metal seat. <laughs> but uh, one of the things it did need is a tail light. Now, I was going to leave it, and I thought, you know, I could replace the missing screw because it's only been held on with one screw. The problem is, one of the little prongs, I'll take the lens off of this one, that these screws go into has snapped off. So I don't actually need to take that lens off, do I? Uh, yes, I will. So, it's only being held on with one screw, and I can't replace the other one because there's nothing to, for the screw to um, fit into. And the lens itself is completely different to this, it's a different shape, it's more sort of cone shaped. And I took it off the other day and noticed that it's all cracked and split anyway, and faded like this one actually. See this one's quite um, bleached. And faded especially on that side that's what the other lens is like so I thought I'll just replace the whole unit because the unit itself is broken that's the bit that's broken off the little bit the screw goes into so I went hunting on eBay and I found this one which this lens actually came with it came with that unit it's a stock tail light hence those two wires. I put this one on because it was just easier to test it. That's the ground wire. It's just being nipped under the nut there, the mounting nut. Um, and all this uses is two basically six watt dynamo lamp bulbs from a set of cycle lights. <clears throat> Bicycle lights rather. It's all that's in there. And it's bright enough for a tail light but the brake light side of it isn't really that noticeable. Not very good. So if I was going to put this on my moped, I would just 
join these two wires together so both bulbs lit up as a tail light. Um, but I thought the lens was crap. Now I'm restoring a bike. I can't really put that crappy lens on there, can I? So I went looking on eBay again. And I found spare lenses. 25 to 30 quid each. I mean, for this whole unit, I actually paid about five pounds and twenty pence plus P and P. <clears throat> but I did find another tail light. Just the tail lamp. There's no stop light on this one. This is a reproduction that came from a eBay shop that sells parts for like PSAs and Triumphs. Um, and this is actually a replica. It's not a genuine new old stock or anything like that, it is a replica but it's a very good replica, it feels quality wise it feels no different to the original to be honest plastic feels like it's made from the exact same plastic exact same. oh there is a slight difference on the back but other than that actually this one's closer to that one even though that's a stock tail uh, no, they are all the same. I've just realised that's just a big washer. If I do this, my wires just fell off. That's just a big washer. <laughs> there, now it looks the same. So, yeah, so it's a very good replica. Although, if someone, you know, motorcycle enthusiast got up close and looked at the lens and saw it didn't have YPAC on it, then they would know it's a replica lamp. But I might have to put them washers back on because that nut doesn't go all the way down. Never mind. So yeah. So I decided to buy that. Which was £15 plus P and P. Because I thought I could have the option and I could either go for that one if I want or I could put that one on. You know, I've got the option when the time comes. And I thought but to have that option I still need the lens. Up pops this one, starting bid at £12, and I was thinking, well, it's quite a lot for a tatty old light with two little stubs coming out the back for wiring. But I thought, well, 12 quid. that lens on it is pretty good, because the lens from this is now on this one. <laughs> and I thought, 12 quid is still cheaper than the um, 25 to 30 quid. Just for that. <laughs> um, so I just bought another light unit. So I've effectively got a spare stop tail light unit. Not necessarily a spare lens because that's crap. I suppose if it got broken and I needed one in a hurry I could slap that on. I mean it still glows red-ish. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, plus this actually still had the seal around it. The replica didn't have a seal for the lens. That just sits in here. So I stole the seal off of this one and put it on here. <clears throat> because I thought if I'm going to use it, I plan to only use the bike on, in good weather. I don't plan to use it in the wet, but you never know. You could In this country you could quite easily get caught in the rain, so I thought I'd, I'd rather have the seal there. Plus, if it gets stored in like a shed or a garage or something, there's a chance moisture could uh, still build up and get in there. So I thought I'd rather have it there than not. Oh yeah, this one's different because someone's bridged the two light bulbs together. So they both come on as a tail light. It's not a stop tail. I could easily convert it because I could just do snip. All I'd have to do is snip this sold a wire on there and a wire on there and do away with this. What I've actually got this ground wire on there, I don't know. Because it grounds out through the body. So I don't know why they sold it. It's right on the bottom. Look. Right on the bottom of that bracket, which is riveted to this, and that is meant to be your grounding, you know, it grounds through the frame. Just like old classic cars used to as well. I don't know if they can still do that on modern cars, as a lot of it is plastic. But <laughs> that's what they used to do. So, um, I suppose I could, if I really wanted to, I could clean this up with a, my Dremel and a wire brush attachment and uh, 
see if I could get a fiver back for it maybe or just keep it as a spare unit you never know if I enjoy restoring this I might want to do another one in the future so might pay to keep hold of it at least for the time being but um, turn the lights off and I'll show you a couple of these working actually before I go off to do other things tonight so there's that one that's the um, replica I don't know if you can see it but it's like a little bright white spot right in the middle I don't know if I can get that to show up on camera but uh, it's like a, f a focal spot you get that on some lights especially if they haven't got a reflector behind them like this some old bicycle um, dynamo lights have that as well especially the ones that bolt to the mudguard sort of like a magnifying lens over the bulb which works quite well actually um, I'd be quite happy to have that on the back of the bike I suppose as it's got no brake light I would have to use hand signals when I can rem remember what the hand signals are for you know stopping I think it's something like that isn't it and slowing down would be your arm going up and down like that if I remember right I have to consult the highway code again I think um, and then we've got this one so you've got one bulb on that's what it looks like with a uh, one bulb and in theory, when the wire stays on, wires are quite stiff so they don't like staying on the springs. As soon as you move a light or something, it pings off. But that's the left side bulb. This one would be the right. I'm not even seeing that much of a difference on camera from here. Maybe at night you might see a bit of a difference. That brake light's coming on. But like I said, if I use that one, it's perfectly usable. But I would just join these two wires together and use it as a tail light. Up to the end of the video just in time because my battery's flashing. Battery low warning has just come on. Anywho, on that note then I will end the video. So thanks a lot for watching I hope you enjoyed it and like I said your suggestions on what I should do are more than welcome leave them in the comments down below and uh, I'll talk to you in the next one bye